So this right here is the deck that we're using today. It has a ton of different features. It's basically Android on your phone. So if you can do it on your phone, you can do it on here. Uh, there is some gotchas that I'll go over towards the end of the video, but it's such a powerful, very quick, you can put YouTube, Plex, a whole bunch of different things on here, which is phenomenal. So let's go through the stock tear out and put in of this and some downsides at the end. So this is my existing car stereo, which is great. It has Android audio, it has Apple AirPlay, all that stuff to where you can just plug your phone in and go. But I wanna transition this out to basically what a Tesla has with a full screen that we can touch with that we don't need to hook up our phones to. However, if you do want this set up, it is very powerful. This has YouTube Music and all the fixings of Google, which is great. Uh, just hook up your phone. This is an Alpine ILX W650, which is absolutely a stellar stereo as it has voice commands, mapping, everything through your phone. A uh, good example of this is you can just yell instructions to it. Play What Is My Life by Jack Septicai. What Is My Life by Jack Septicai and the Gregory Brothers? Sure. Playing on YouTube Music. And there we go. <laughs> you can see that is actually playing. So you can do that. You can say, hey, take me to the nearest gas station and it'll go ahead and direct you to that. So I want all that functionality. I just don't want to necessarily have to hook up my phone with it. I just want it all built into the deck to where we don't do this. So with that said, I'm gonna tear this entire thing apart and we're gonna start in on replacing this with a Chinese deck. Uh, now I've used multiple Chinese decks in the past. I've used a Toto, I think is how you pronounce it. Those are really cheap, they're about $100, not great quality. Mine died after about two years before replacing it with this one. And now we're moving to a pumpkin brand, which is uh, a lot more expensive, about double the price or triple the price, around $300. But the screen should be about like that, almost like what you see in a Tesla, at least with what we can work with on this older car. take our harness. Uh, we're gonna unhook all this, but we're gonna first map it out with our harness uh, from our new stereos from Pumpkin, and we'll see what happens with it. All right, so the, here's my hot mess of stuff, but here is the actual wiring harness. I went ahead and retrofitted this right here with a 3.5 millimeter jack. This is gonna take care of the SWC or the steering wheel controls. Uh, I have a key one, a key two, and a wheel ground. Cheaper models will only have key one, key two. Whenever you buy this, it'll need three pulls, which you'll need that ground. You can actually pull the ground from the actual harness into here to terminate this one and make a successful steering wheel control. However, the pumpkins are actually pretty decent. We have the three wires to complete that without having to do that workaround. So there is our steering wheel controls. And now here is our wiring harness, which I'm gonna go ahead and cut. All right, so obviously we can't use this end of the termination. So we're just gonna cut all these wires right off of here. And that's what we're left with. Obviously, we're not gonna need this. Now we're gonna to have to hook up this wiring harness and this is accessory, this is illumination. These are our speaker wires and then this is the actual power antenna. So we have to actually be able to hook all these up into the car. So here is our other wiring harness and you can kind of see it's a little bit alike. Here is our Alpine and this is the new Chinese one. So we're gonna use it as a map. As we disconnect these wires, we're gonna hook these wires up. And the colors should pretty much match. As you can see, battery, battery, colors the same. And if you look, it's pretty universal throughout. So we should be able to match up all these, even though some of them are not labeled. Uh, label, obviously put all the ones that are labeled first, like battery would be a good one to connect. Now typically a pro 
car shop will do a lot better job than me than just using these twist caps. Uh, they usually use uh, butt splices or they'll actually use full solder uh, as that would be preferred for a better connection. But today we're just gonna do the quick and easy. And there's gonna be some that we're not gonna use. This blue wire right here is actually an antenna wire. This is meant for power antennas. As you see, this one wasn't even connected up back in the old one. It was just kind of left hanging loose. So there's gonna be a couple here that we're, we'll just leave hanging. But I'm gonna go ahead and do all the speakers. Uh, just a note on this, RR means right rear negative, and this is right left positive. You should also have like a right left negative as well, which will probably be the same color as you see right here. This is a right left negative. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hook all these up according to this wire harness. So this is the actual deck right here. Uh, I've got it all framed up so it should slide right in. The screen actually comes in and attaches right here. The wiring harness has been all redone with what came with the pumpkin. A couple things here, the brake, the reverse line, which is still to be tied in. This is for a power antenna, which we will not connect up. And then everything else here is pretty much connected up. These are actually some extra wires from the pack device, which I don't think we need to use. And I think we're ready to do this thing. All right, right now I am hooking up the reverse line. This is actually a manually done deal. I had to run a wire all the way back to my headlight and splice into that. So when it goes into reverse, this gets power and then it should flip the screen into reverse mode. So with this in, it should be good. Uh, this goes into the deck. This goes into the actual uh, bottom of the wiring harness here. So this is the factory. So this just plugs right up without any modification, or very few modifications, I should say. Now, we still have our power antenna we gotta use, which we'll plug into that. Uh, this will go into our deck. So let's push this back into here, find a good crevice for it. So we have that and the power antenna this is our microphone which all the way up here right here is where the microphone it's already been wired through um i do have a wi-fi and a gps we need to hook up as well and i don't see any wires for that so that means we're gonna have to hook up that now so one second all right so i went ahead and did some cable runs here i went ahead and put a new gps in over there at the very middle of the dash. I have the Wi-Fi adapter over here. Uh, we have a bunch of different USBs for charging phones. One USB is actually just a direct run USB. That's specifically for like a 3G or 4G adapter to connect into cell cellular towers while we're driving. Um, and then a couple other just runs for Wi-Fi amplification when I wanna tap into a landline and then just uh, a better GPS and then everything else should be set for our final run here. I'm gonna start connecting everything up and we'll see what we get. All right, here it goes. First time after hooking everything up, let's see what we get. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Everything looks good here. Um, I think, let's make sure we got some music in here. Uh, I'll play the radio. Speakers are good. All right, we'll uh, we'll take that off. All right, turn it off and power down. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Tesla. 300 bucks and we're there. Now, as far as downsides go, there are a couple problems with this. First off, Bluetooth. Well, this particular model had issues. Also, the components of these guys are usually pretty cheaply made because you can get these as cheap as $100 or as expensive as maybe $300 on the high end, like this model right here was about 300 bucks. I will say, my A Toto that I had before this pumpkin one, it died on me after about two years, the screen just went out. So I know that they probably won't last very long even though they are very cool. 
Other problems that I saw is it's all China-based to where if you're in the US, there's gonna be some radio and other things that you're gonna have to change. And it's not exactly a great experience depending on the app you're on. Like YouTube Music does not work very well. However, Spotify works pretty darn well and looks good, but the app experience is not very consistent compared to what you'd get with a no more name brand. So those are the big gotchas with this. It's fun to tinker with, but just anticipate some jankiness or issues with it. Uh, but I find myself just loving every minute of getting in here, playing around, but in actuality, probably in a year or two, I'll probably end up ripping this out and trying something else or trying something new. So it's not for everybody. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.